Is this interesting? Hey everyone, welcome to Garden Fork, another edition of Viewer Mail. Charlie and Henry, they only will sit still for so long and then um, they're going to go outside. Anyway, I thought I would just kind of uh, reach out to everyone, say hello, kind of talk about some recent comments. Some of them not as nice as I would expect. Some of them, most of them are really great. What do you think? Let me know in the show notes here. So first thing, I started to experiment with what's called a 360 camera. Uh, YouTube invited me to this workshop. They showed us how to use this new kind of camera. And it allows you to look all the way around the viewpoint of what's going on. Um, if you have a smartphone and you use the YouTube app, if you just hold it in front of you and you move the phone around and you stay in one position, you know, you can look behind you and you can see what's going on all around me as I make the video. It's a really, it's kind of challenging to make videos. And I made a beekeeping video with that and a canoeing video, which I thought was a lot of fun. And a couple different people said, this video sucks. And I don't really like to use that word. And I was like, it just bummed me out. Um, I think Garden Fork's a pretty positive channel. And if you don't have anything nice to say about it, then just click away and go watch something else. I know that happens on the internet. I know there's this, there's a lot of great stuff on the internet and it's a lot, a lot of people that come together like us, but then there's just this, this bad part. So after that happened, I turned off the internet for a while. It's around July 4th. And I don't know if you noticed, but I just wasn't really active. And I, I was just was like, you know, I'm just gonna turn this thing off for a while. And so anyway, now I'm back. But that kind of bugged me. I don't know if we'll keep on making 360 videos because it's kind of hard to show how-tos and DIYs and stuff with that format. But then there's some other videos that I think it'll work really well. And I went to another YouTube workshop at the Googleplex in Manhattan and they showed me this camera which is 16 or 18 GoPros in a circle. So for you people that are geeking out on this kind of thing, um, it's an amazing camera and we're trying to think of a use for that. So think about that. All right. Recently, I put out a video about really simple ice cream you can make with an ice cream maker. Now, I kind of subscribe to Alton Brown's um, kind of old school, what's that word he uses for an appliance that only does one thing? A unitasker. Um, and I like, I just don't like to accumulate too much stuff anymore. But the ice cream maker, we got it as a gift a while ago and I was like, well, what am I going to do with this thing? Because it just makes ice cream. But it does what it does really well and really easily and the only thing you have to do is remember to keep the container in the freezer at all times and it doesn't take up much space and you can bring it out and you can make a very fancy what's called like a premium custard based ice cream which uses eggs uh, and heated milk and then you have to cool that down for a couple hours or you can just make a quickie ice cream which I think is closer to ice milk um, but it works if in the afternoon you decide let's have some ice cream after dinner, you can put this together, it's just sugar, whole milk, cream, and vanilla, or maybe another kind of flavor you want. The trick is to get the sugar to fully dissolve in the milk, and I use a stick blender for that, but you can watch that video, I will link to it in the show notes right below here. But a lot of people were like, you know, I've got one of those things in my basement, and I never used it because I thought it was complicated, or I had to make the custard mix in that. Come here, my little girl. She's going to maybe come back in. Oh, there she is. Can you come over here and sit? Hey. Thank you. Uh, so go out and try it. If it's, in your, if it's in your basement, pull it out. Put it in the freezer overnight. You can only make one batch. Uh, once you, uh, you take it out and you put it in the, you refreeze it, um, the cooling stuff is kind of spent and needs to be refrozen overnight. That's my experience at least. Let me know what your experience is below or just watch the video and leave the comments there. Tina made a nice comment. She said, I won my ice cream maker, yay. And Walmart has a mix. All I do is use whole milk and strawberry chocolate mix. Add strawberries, eat. Not bad, huh? Yeah, you know what I mean? Whatever works for you works for me. The Labradors definitely, did you get some of the ice cream? Yes. Um, the pups definitely did get ice cream. It's just when I show them being fed in a video, it seems to get a lot of negative comments. So um, they do definitely 
get their share of treats and ice cream was one of them. Right, my little girl? Hey, have you ever made your own iced coffee? It's really easy. I made a video about it last year. It links in the show notes here. But you can get one of these uh, little French presses. You can buy them new or you can even buy it at a tag sale because I'm sure there's a lot of them out there. And it's an overnight process and it tastes just like the fancy stores and you're saving a ton of money and you can surprise your significant other with some iced coffee in the morning if you start the day before. So I'll link to that in the show notes there. Try that out. What's next? Oh, um, I'll be coming out with a couple of videos about some Troy Built equipment. Uh, Troy Built is one of the big Garden Fork sponsors, and they sent me a new rototiller, which is quite amazing. And they also sent me a new cordless string trimmer that uses a new electric electronic motor technology that I've never seen before, and uh, it's pretty impressive. Thank you. Uh, not too excited about rototillers. But they do like the lawnmower for some reason. I don't know. Lastly, um, I don't know if you've ever cooked steak right on charcoal, but you should watch our video about that. It is pretty cool. It's, um, I was blown away by the taste and the flavor and the simplicity of it. Again, the link is in the show notes here. And also, Will, who's active on the Garden Fork Facebook group, also made a video about cooking directly on charcoal. And we have a comment. Tenzo says, wow. I was expecting on the grill. This should have been cooking steak on top of charcoal. Yeah, I guess I could rename the title of the show, but just laying the steak uh, right on top of the coals is totally fine. You're cooking on wood, and wood is cellulose, which is what comprises most vegetables. So it's totally fine. You do a dry rub, you wait a little bit, drop it on, and man, does that taste good. So there you go. All right, there you go. Just a little bit of inside the world of Eric. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Um, coming up, we have another cast iron video. I'm building a kitchen island, which is right behind me here. Um, and I'll be finishing that up today. I have to make another trip to the home improvement store. I make a trip every day when I'm in a project because something always happens. Let me know what's happening to you. And don't forget to check out our private Facebook group. It's where People can post pictures and ask questions. Um, really a nice group of people there as well. And don't forget our email newsletter as well. All that information about me and my world is in the show notes here. All right, so make it a great day. I'll see you later.